So today, we're going to be looking at what, what I've titled Dominion Chapel Vision Talk. But let me read from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. No, no, can you, I'll, I'll give you instruction when I want you to bring it up, please. Yeah, so let us pray. Father, Lord, we want to thank you today. We bless you. Thank you for the service, oh God, so far. Lord, as we go into today's talk, we ask for utterance. We ask for direction. We ask for impartation. Lord, touch us today by your spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I just want to say thank you. Think through my mind and speak through my lips this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. We're going to be, I'm going to read from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Bible says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what you will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down. It was Habakkuk speaking. Then the Lord answered him and said, write down the vision. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. In Jesus' name, say amen. Okay. Can you go to the first? Um, so today we're going to be, uh, the whole purpose of today is to, to share with us as a church what we stand for, and towards the end, we'll look at even our goals for the year and also what we, as a church, what our vision is. But first of all, I want to define what a vision is. A vision is a picture of the future that produces passion. You know, somebody says, you know, uh, a vision is a picture of the future that produces passion. What that means is that, you see, when God gives you a vision, you it produces passion in you and it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a picture of what the future holds for you i want you to really follow me today vision is very very powerful you know let me give you a, a, a practical example one time i remember years ago the first time i ever shared this let me tell you how powerful vision is the first time i ever shared this uh, many years ago when the church first started a young a young boy in the church, he was no more than 10 or 11 at the time, he said to me at the end of the service, he said, Pastor, I want to be part of this. My mommy gives me five pounds every week for my, I want to donate it to the church. You know, I then realized something. Straight away, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, see what vision does. It makes people want to be part of what is going on. Do you understand? The Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. Are you with me? Meaning that where there is nothing to look forward to, vision is something you look forward to that produces passion in you. Are you with me today? So just follow me. What I'm about to share with you is very powerful, and I'm going to encourage people who are, who are not here today to listen to it as well. So vision is a picture of the future that produces passion in you. Somebody also defined vision as a clear mental picture of what could be Fueled by the conviction that it should be a, a pastor called Andy Stanley mentioned that uh, uh, vision is a description of a desired future state, a desired future state, but not just what you desire, but what God has revealed to you. Praise the Lord. Can we go to the next slide, please? Also, you see, what is vision? God, vision is God's voice. God is God's voice. In my vision, what that means is that you see, God will usually speak. The, the scripture we read, Habakkuk said, I will stand and set myself on a ramp and I will watch to see what he will say to me. Vision is usually what God speaks to the church, to an individual about the future. Okay? Vision for your life is hidden in the voice of God, you know. University may give you degrees and qualifications, but the voice of God gives you a vision for your life. Say amen. So God will usually speak. He can, you know, God speaks through, it can be audible voice, it can be mostly through his word. 
some sometimes through people you know god can speak to you in about nine different ways we'll cover that at some point can you go to the next one please next slide please god gave joseph a vision at a very young age in genesis chapter 37 verse 5 to 7. it was a dream you see god can speak to you through a dreams he can give you a vision it can be an open vision it can be while you're sleeping god spoke to joseph you know through a dream he saw his brothers you know bowing down that was a picture of his future it was a picture so don't negate don't neglect your dreams don't neglect whatever god is saying to you god gave abraham a vision where he will have a masses have masses of people that will call him father when god gave him that vision he didn't have any child at the time so god told him that you know what in genesis 17 you know that you're going to be a father of many nations this was a man that didn't have a child yet and god was already giving me a picture so a vision is a picture of your future that god speaks to you through it can be any way you know god gave israel a promise of a promised land you know a land flowing with milk and honey in genesis chapter uh, exodus 3 1 to 17 where god was speaking to them you know god gave even churches the body of Christ, God is giving us a vision of reaching masses and discipling them for kingdom of God in Matthew 28, um, 18 to 20, which is, all, Jesus says, all authority have been given to me, you know, and he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel and, you know, and baptizing them in the name of the Father and discipling them. Can you go to the next one for me, please? So just you know, flow with me today. A person without vision is worse than a person without sight. Do you know that somebody might be, somebody might be blind, which is not a good thing. I'm not in any way saying that being blind is good. But a blind person can have vision for life. So vision is not just physical sight. It's doing what God has created you to do and to accomplish. Praise the Lord. Because that person life will be dependent on what's happening in the world. You see, when somebody is without vision, they are just moved by what is going on in the economy. They're moved by sight. They're not walking by faith. When you have vision for your life, you see, our, the vision God gives any person is really bigger than them, and it is God that helps you to fulfill it by giving you all the resources you need. Say amen. Next slide, please. As a Christian, you don't build your life according to the desires of this world, but according to the blueprint God has for your life, which comes through vision and purpose. Moses was asked to build a temple, but God gave him a pattern. Remember, you see, our vision for life, our, our purpose in life has been predetermined by God even before you came here on planet Earth. So you discover your purpose, you discover the reason why God has created you, and then you begin to walk in. You don't give yourself uh, 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 your own purpose. You don't give yourself your own vision. Do you understand? You know, you see God, he reveals it to you, and you begin to walk in it. Do you know in Exodus 25 verse 14, it says, And see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. God showed Moses a pattern of how to build the physical temple, the temple that they, they used at the time. So if God told Moses, gave him a pattern, what the, let me put it, what the church should be designed like, do you think he would not give us a pattern for how to build this church or how to uh, 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 fulfill his mandate over your life? So what we're talking about here today in a nutshell is that God has a vision for your life. He has a purpose for your life. You are not just here just to go to work, make money, eat, sleep, have children. That's, not a, that's just benefits of being in the kingdom that God does. Are you with me? Let's go to the next slide, please. God had you in mind before you were born and has a vision and purpose for your life. You are very important in God's agenda. Never allow anyone to talk down on you. You know why? God has an agenda for your life. He has a plan for your life. And it's not dependent on how good you are. He's already planned it. Are you with me? You know, in Jeremiah chapter, uh, ch chapter 1, verse 5, 
you know that popular scripture before God was speaking to this prophet and is speaking to you as well. He says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So before even Jeremiah, who was a prophet, his parents came together, God said, I already knew you. You are in the mind of God even before you were conceived. Say, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. The, that is exactly what happens for every, every child of God. Before you were even conceived, God already predetermined what you are going to become, who you are going to be. A lot of times, we just choose, I feel like this. I want to become like this. You know, I remember um, uh, um, a doctor that I know is actually going home to be with the Lord now. He he, he, he was coughing. When he was very a small boy, he was coughing very badly. So they took him to the clinic. And when they took him to the clinic, they gave him this cough syrup. That cough syrup was very sweet. He really liked it. He said, can I have more, please? More, please? <laughs> they said, no, no. You don't need too much of this. You're going to get better. Just take it two, three times a day, and the cough disappeared. Do you know that gentleman decided he was going to become a doctor so that he can have more cough mixture? <laughs> He said this himself. He said he liked the taste of the cough mixture so much. He was a young child at the time. He said, I need to become a doctor so that I can have more, more cough mixtures. <laughs> you don't determine. Remember, what we're talking about today is a, uh, is a vision. God has created you for a purpose, and, um, and, and he has a blueprint for your life. So Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you before you were born. I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. What you are supposed to become, God already knew. He's already, he has a blueprint for your life. So what we do as believers is to pray and ask God, and be planted in the right place so that God begins to uh, 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 release us into those areas. Are you with me today? The next, the next one, please. You and I are meant to discover the vision and purpose God has given us. Our job is to stay connected with him so that we can hear what he wants for us. Are you, are you following me? Okay. Do you know even Jesus did not do his own will? He only did what he saw the Father do. In John 6, 38, he said, I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. There are over, is it over 7 billion now people on the face of this earth? Do you know that majority of people, you just want, everybody, a lot of time, people just want to do what they feel like, not what God wants. So as believers, we're meant to seek. Even Jesus, he did not come for his own will. He came to do the Father's will. You see, I was just thinking, I said I was going to use this example. My friend in America that visited that day, they opened up this um, hospital, this, um, you know, business. And he, I remember when we were talking, he said, the, the, the inside of the place, the way it's been designed, you can just see that this is really beautiful, you know, the way the design. And I said, how did you come about this? He said, I designed it myself. So he said, he, he and his wife, they sat down, we're going to have this, we're going to have this, we're going to have this room, there's going to have the room for children, room for this, for that, for that. So they, they told somebody what they had in mind, so the person drew it out for them. They now gave it to the builder to build. Do you know it's the same thing? When, when, when we come on the face of this earth, God has already, we're just flowing with what God is already predetermined. Are you with me? You don't come and just make a decision I want to do. This. Obviously, when you're a child of God, you pray and you step out in faith, believing that this is the direction God wants you to go. You know, I have a friend who whose first son is a medical doctor. Um, if, if he's, he's graduated a couple of years ago as a medical doctor. And the boy said, no, I don't want to practice as a doctor. I want to be a, 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 a sound, uh, <laughs> what do you call it, uh, a music um, eh? sound engineer or something. He said, I don't want to do that. You made me do it. You said medicine <laughs> is good, so I did it. He just dropped the whole thing. It's, now he goes around doing DJing. I said, oh my God, <laughs> Lord, 
Lord have mercy. Now, what I'm saying here is that a lot of times we just go and do what we feel like doing. We forgot that God has already predetermined. Our job is to discover, God, what have you called me to do? What is your purpose for my life? Why am I here? And he begins to guide you. He begins to plant you in the right place where he wants you to grow. Because nobody just becomes that thing that God has called them to do. You go through process. Look at Joseph. God already determined this man, Joseph, was going to become the prime minister of Egypt many years ahead. And he knew that Egypt was the only place that was going to have food in the whole entire world. And the Israelites, the, I mean, the family of Joseph were going to be needing food and stuff. So God sent him well ahead. That is why when we go through challenge, don't necessarily see it. Of course, we don't pray for challenges, but it's all part and parcel of God's plan. Everything will work together for our good. Are you with me? Joseph was inside prison. When you look at him, somebody can look at Joseph at the time and say, my God, this guy doesn't have any, you know, look at maybe God, maybe he has sinned. That's what we do. We just look at them and say, oh, they're sinner. That's why they're going through this. You never know what God is planning. That guy was in the prison for what he didn't do, but God was planning, scheming everything behind the scenes, making everything work together for him. Eventually, God promoted him. He passed all the tests. And then God promoted him. Sometimes all the world will go through is, is a test. Job never sinned against God. And he went through those afflictions. Even the wife said, why don't you just curse God and just let's, let's die? He said, you're a foolish human. Don't behave like a foolish human. You know, and he said a few things. And look at that. Bible says God restored. God restored him to two, three times even at, at the end. He, he, he didn't realize. We are the ones that read the Bible and realize that God challenged. Satan told God that if you take all these things away from this guy, he's going to curse you. So God said, no, he was still going to serve me. Let, let, let's do it. So sometimes what you go through, I'm not saying it, it's the enemy. A lot of times it's the enemy. But sometimes God allows it to, to even to test what is in your heart. So Bible says, I haven't done all to stand. Let us remain standing. Amen. Jesus did not come to do his own will, but the will of the Father. Are you doing your own will? Let's go to the next slide, please. You and I are builders on this earth, but God has a blueprint for your life. You see, as God's children in the body of Christ, we're helping to build, but Jesus, we're building according to the pattern he has given to us. The builder's work is based on the wishes of the owner. You remember, my friend, he, he told the builder, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. So they build it based on his own pattern. So God has already given us a pattern. We just need to flow with it. Not what we want, but what he wants. And that is why the builder must always have clear communication from the owner so that he can build what the owner wants. Who, who owns the church? Is Jesus. He is the master builder. God told Moses, build according to pattern. Put this one here. Put that one there. Put this one there. So, God is the owner. He just gives us a blueprint and tells us, okay, build according to what I've said. The next one, please. Now, the next slide, please. Right. So, now, listen to this. Your past does not cancel God's plan for your life. God has a great plan for your life. Say amen. amen. There are people in the Bible. Rahab was a prostitute, but God saved her life. You know, Mary Magdalene was a woman of the streets as well from what we saw. Jesus touched her. Her life changed just like that. Goma, the same. These are people that God used powerfully in the Bible. So your past does not cancel God's plan for your life. You know, so don't look at your past. Oh, I, I don't. None of us qualify. It is God's grace that helps us to become what He has destined us to become. In Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, Bible says, "For I know the thoughts." Another version says, "I know the plans I think towards you." Says the Lord, "Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a hope and a future." The next one, please. Do you know that you are created to do good works? In God's kingdom. You see, we're not created, listen to this, we're not saved by works. Meaning that it is not how, 
many things you do for God that makes God love you. No, we are saved by grace. Bible says in Ephesians 2, we have been saved by grace. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. But guess what? We're saved to do good works. We're, we're not saved by works, but we're saved to do good works. Bible talks about, in Acts 13, verse 2, Bible says, as they minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit says, separate to me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have called them to do. You have a work to do in God's kingdom. Do you know, even in the natural, do people pay, get paid without doing any work? When you get a job, you are paid for what you do, isn't it? So it worries me when somebody has been a believer for years. Remember, God only accepts your work when you are in his kingdom. I'm talking about people who are saved. You are not saved by works, but you are saved to do good works. I get a bit worried. And one of the reasons why we share this maybe a couple of times a year is to remind us that it's not just about this local church. Find something to do in God's kingdom. When we see him face to face, he's going to ask you, with the resources I gave you, what have you done with it? You remember the very first time I shared the word, I brain cross. You know, this boy, he was, he's now maybe about 20, 20s now. He just came to me after I shared it. He said, Pastor, my mom gives me five pounds every week. I want to sow to this vision. Can you see the power of vision? The boy caught the vision at the age of 10 or 11. You can't be a believer and not do anything for God. It's like going to work and expecting to be paid. No, no, not going to work and you're expecting payment. Bible says a laborer is worthy of his wages. What are you doing? This is not to uh, 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 condemn all, anyone who is not doing anything. This is to challenge us. God has given you resources, energy, ability, talent, spiritual gift. Are you using it for his kingdom and for his glory? You must be a believer to use it anywhere. Are you with me? I'm not talking about unbeliever. You are created to do good work. Bible says, separate unto me, Paul and Brian, for the work to which I have called them to do. Jesus came and said, I have done the work my father told me to do. So there's the work. You see, we always think, you see, we have our secular jobs and stuff like that. And yes, everywhere we go, we bring the kingdom there. But the truth is that a lot of times our secular work is not the work we're talking about here. That can give you a platform to do that work, but that is not the work. That one gives us bread and butter, gives us money to pay our bills, which is good. I'm not knocking that down. We need to work. We need to earn something. But I'm talking about the work God has given you. It has to do with his kingdom. You are created to do good. We're not saved by works, but we're saved to do good works. Say amen. amen. Next one, please. The next one, slide. Is there? No, uh, no, no I want the next one after this one. Oh, is this still? Okay. Right. So what we're saying this morning is that it is important that you have a role to play in God. Everyone has a role to play in God's kingdom. And you see, it's not in, in God's kingdom, it doesn't matter which role. You know, some roles are more obvious, like some of us that I speak. Maybe we have to hold microphone, we have to pray and stuff like that. You see, in God's kingdom, God gives us different graces to do different things. So it's not just, it's not about the type of role is about your faithfulness and your commitment. In John chapter, uh, uh, Matthew 25, you know, where Jesus was talking about a, a man that was going on a long journey, and to somebody he gave five talents, another one two, another one one. The one that got five, when the master came by, he had multiplied, he has put it to use. Talent is your resources, your giftings, you put it to use and you've enlarged and increased it, multiplied it. The one that had to had multiplied, the one that had one went to bury it, never used it, never did anything for God's kingdom. And Jesus said, You are a wicked servant. Jesus took that one and gave it to the one that had five. So, what are we saying here? You have an important role to play. You are very, very important in God's kingdom. Say, I am very important. <laughs> 
in God's kingdom. In Bible says, in, in, uh, in Esther chapter 4, verse 14, the B part, it says, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this was Mordecai talking to Esther. Esther had become queen at the time, and uh, 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 Haman was a, a man called Haman was planning to exterminate the Jews. So Esther's uncle told her, "Hey, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. We need you in the kingdom. You are not. A, I always like to say, remind you that nobody is a non-entity in God's kingdom. Be respective of your educational background. It doesn't matter." Let God equip you, and he will use you mightily in Jesus' name. Next, next one, please. Are you getting something this afternoon? You were put here on earth to make a contribution. Do you know there are people that have been saved, and they go to church for the next 20 years of their life. All they go to church to do is just to receive blessing. And God blesses us when we go there's no doubt about that but you are there you need to you see the purpose of sh sharing this today is to remind you that you have a role to play in god's kingdom we're going to be talking later i'll be showing you about our departments and how you can engage and you know the way god works you don't just become even if god has gifted you to be a prophet to be an apostle do, do, you don't just become that overnight you start you may be a church cleaner, being faithful, and God sees your heart. And God will give you a, a dream, a vision, open somebody's eyes to, to, to even maybe prophesy into your life and say, this is what God is telling me to tell you. You start, you, you, you don't kind of just, oh, until I hold the mic or until I do this. And No, 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 no. You are put here on, and you start small and God begins to, you know, increase. It's, it's a bit like, you, you, you know, when you start your education, you start in nursery, you know, you go to primary, they start teaching you how to, you know, addition, multiplication, then you go to secondary school, then you go to university, you're doing heavy stuff. You understand? God trains us, but you start from something. Even if you're not clear what God has called you to do, start doing something for God's kingdom. Don't let Whatever the pressures of this life just overwhelm and you, you forget about God's kingdom. When we see him face to face, he's going to ask every one of us, what have you done? I gave you this, I gave you that, you know. He told the person that multiplied his gifts by uh, the five to ten, he said, well done, that good and faithful servant. He told the one that had to, well done, that good and faithful servant. It was the one that did not do anything. He said, you're a wicked servant. Do you know, the one that had five, that multiplied to become ten, Jesus didn't say, wow, you've got ten now. It doesn't matter. You see, your faithfulness in the little that even that you have, God will honor him. So it doesn't mean that somebody who is a clean, that cleans the church or washes the toilet is more. In God's sight, the person that washes, cleans up this place and washes the toilet doesn't mean that they are less uh, judge, I mean, the, the, the God perceives them less than somebody who is holding the mic. Do you know? Do you know? A, 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 even a pastor who is not faithful, somebody who is cleaning the church, might be more faithful than somebody else who is holding the mic. So it doesn't matter. It is your faithfulness and your commitment that God is looking at. Are you with me? So don't look. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I prefer this one because you know. Even check your motive. Why, why do you, is it because you want people to see? So God looks at all those things. So God designed you to make a difference with your life because he has given you giftings and abilities. In 2 Timothy 1, I say, God who has saved us. Look, look at this scripture. It's very, very important. Paul was telling Timothy, he said, God who has saved us and he has called us. With, a, with what? A holy calling. So when you are saved, you are also called. Are you with me? You know, so don't have this. It's a wrong mindset to think that it, it is, oh, those people, it is only these people that are called. When you are saved, you are also called to do something for God. Are you with me? It's not only some people that are just meant to be pastors. This one, they, uh, 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 the rest of us, we're just meant to just go and receive a blessing. No. Everybody 
is called to do something. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That calling is holy. It separates you from unbelievers. It separates you. You know, the Bible says, come ye out of them and be separate. Anything we do for God is a holy calling. By the grace of God, there are certain things, you know, um, during our home cell, the other day I was sharing with the people that, um, you know, when I was not saved, I used to go to nightclub, you know, <laughs> and somebody said, I can't ever picture you to be, <laughs> you don't want to picture that. <laughs> Hey, he says, who has called us with a holy calling? But can you imagine me now? And I say, I want to go back to the club. I can't do that anymore. I won't, I won't even feel. They will say, this one, you are not supposed to be here. Now, he says, who have called us with a... That calling separates you. It separates you from start doing certain things. Are you with me? So he says, who has called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works. It's not how intelligent. It is not how educated you are. It's not according to our works, not according to um, things that your, 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 your past, not according to things, the good things you've done. It is by his grace. Are you with me? It is purely by his grace, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So what is this thing telling us? If you are saved, you are also called to do something for God's kingdom, not to earn your salvation, but you remember we said we are saved by grace, but to do good works. Are you with me? We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace, not of our works, but to do good works. You are not saved just to remain and, okay, what, what are they going to pray about? What am I going to do? No, no, it's not that I remember... Uh, somebody that I know years, some time ago, we did, I didn't see this person for a long time, so we're talking, and um, the person said to me, oh, the church I go to, they don't do this, they don't do that, and I said, excuse me, you and I have been saved <laughs> many years, what are you yourself doing? She got upset with me, actually, as I challenged her, I said, what are you yourself doing? Why don't you help in that area? Church is not a perfect, church is like a spiritual hospital where all people, there are different people at different levels of growth, you know. So we all come, and God is helping us to grow. That's why you see somebody, after five years in the church, they have grown. You see them taking their role, and they're growing, they're growing. You see somebody that just came, you know, maybe they might have a few faults here and there, and they begin to grow as well. So God puts us all together so that iron sharpened iron will begin to grow, begin to encourage one another. Church, I see church as a, it's like a spiritual hospital where God just helps us to grow, nurture us to become who we, he has called us to be. So remember, you are put on here to make a contribution. Praise the Lord. So you are very, very important in God's kingdom. No matter how old you are, you are important in God's kingdom. The next, next slide, please. Before God created you, he decided what role he wanted you to play on earth. God designed you to serve him in a way that makes your ministry unique. See, in Isaiah, God says, 43, 21, These people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. So, in this church, we encourage people to fulfill their destiny. We make things available so that you can fit in. You know, when I became saved, I was, I, 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 I was a Muslim when I had an encounter with Christ many years ago. And I noticed, when I look at my journey, God is so wonderful. Shortly after I got saved, a few months later, I came to live in this country. And God literally planted me in a church that was quite small. So I had people that looked, if I don't go to church, I can bet somebody is going to call me. Somebody is going to come and visit me. You know, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? You know, you know that's why some of the downside, don't get me wrong, we're a big church in Jesus' name, amen. And I'm not knocking down big churches, but even in big churches, belong to a cluster, belong to a group that people know who you are. One can get lost in a big place. So God planted me in a, in a mother church then, which was quite small. People knew me, and, um, you know, God started helping me. You know, uh, I had some people that make sure that I was okay. What I'm saying here is that God want, has designed us to serve you in a way that makes your ministry unique. Let's go to the next one. Don't let me digress too much. 
you discover your vision and purpose through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Nobody can become who God has called them to be without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Bible says everything God created finds its purpose in God. You can't find your purpose anywhere. You don't, some people say, look within you. Uh, do this. Go and read books. You can't find your purpose in a book. God will literally give you, you know, when you seek him, he will show it to you. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, Colossians 1, 16, Bible says, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities. All things were created through him and for whom? And for him. So you find your purpose and your vision through him, through prayer, as you seek him, as you engage, he will begin to guide you. You might, you might, you might go and join a particular ministry, uh, a particular department, and then you realize that your grace, you don't have the grace for that. And then you go to another one, then you realize, yes, this is it. You know, but remember, you discover your, 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 your purpose and the vision God has given to you. You, you discover it. It's a discovery. It's not something you give to yourself. You don't just say, sometimes it, you see, God put that desire. Sometimes you, somebody might have an, a strong affiliation for prayer or for something and then you can see that that is linked to their purpose. I am not saying that even if you have a passion for something, one of the ways you know your spiritual gifting and what God has called you to is your passion, what you enjoy to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not knocking down the fact that just because you like something, you know, uh, it could be an indication that is what God has called you to do. But even if you are not sure, still be a part of it. Commit to it and stay faithful until God begins to show you what exactly is called you to do. Let's go to the next one, please. Now, we're going to be looking at um, uh, uh, why is it important to know your purpose and have a vision for your life. It's extremely important. The next slide, please. Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. Have you ever had, it's always, it's, sometimes it's on the news, you find people extremely successful in the marketplace, sometimes millionaires, sometimes billionaires, and they say they're depressed. They, 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 they don't, it's like life is empty. Or you find some of them, they're very successful, and they start doing certain things, maybe with drugs or something, just to fuel that emptiness in them. Do you know, somebody may not even have money in their pocket, but when they're working in God's will, when they're in the center of God's will for their life, they're content. Are you with me? Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. Without God, life has no purpose. If one takes away God from their life, God forbid, <laughs> and start living and uh, successful in career, successful in business, if you really talk to people like that, they will tell you that there's an emptiness in them. That's why some of them, they start delving in certain things. Some of them, they even get to a point, they'll just go and maybe even commit suicide because there's not, you see, life only makes meaning when you find your purpose in God. Without purpose, life has no meaning. In 1 John 5, 12, 1 John 5, it says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Life the real life that we're talking about, the Zoe life of God, you can only find it in Christ, and that is what gives you fulfillment in life. Amen. Next one, please. Knowing your purpose focuses your life. It concentrates your effort on what is important. In Luke chapter 4, verse 3, Jesus said, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose... I have been sent. Jesus was very focused. He knew exactly what the Father wanted him to accomplish. Next, next one, please. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. It defines what you do and don't do. In Proverbs 15, 16, the Bible says, Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. What we're saying here is that when you know your purpose... <laughs> and you have a vision for your life, it simplifies your life. It defines what you do and what you don't do. Next one, please. Knowing your purpose, it motivates your life. 
Purpose and vision always produces passion. Nothing energizes like a clear purpose. John 2, 17, zeal for your house has consumed me. A true believer that loves God and walking in God's purpose, you will always have joy. Even when you go through stuff, you will rise above those things because it motivates your life. Amen. Next one, please. Knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each way one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Every one of us, every believer, one day, in fact, every human being will stand before God one day. But for believers, we stand to get our rewards, our crown from him. He says, one day we will receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. You know, I always see this life as an exam hall. If you have this consciousness, it will help you to make right decision. Somebody is watching, okay? Somebody is actually, God loves us, but it's like I see this life like a school that one day <laughs> we're going to stand before our maker and he's going to tell you how much how, 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 it's like when you do an exam, how much you've scored in the exam. You know what I'm saying, you know. But remember, for believers, it's not unto damnation. We already know our destination is for our rewards. Some people are going to have mansions. They're going to have big mansions. They said in heaven, there are different cadres of mansions, you know. When I was in America this last week, I tell you, because they have land in that place, you see, so I went to visit... Um, Somebody, actually, if you see the house, I said, in fact, I said, why do you people have such space here? <laughs> you know, there's just, you know, basement, this one, toilet there, bathroom there, study there, games room here, snooker room here. I said, ah, you know, <laughs> they have a lot of space. They said in heaven, it's like that. Some people are going to be, when they get to heaven, based on what they have done, they will have one bedroom Apartment. <laughs> Every member of Dominion Chapel is going to be mansions. Amen. You know, like the ones I saw in America. <laughs> I remember my first time in the U.S. This was many years ago. I think it was 1996 or something. We went, and uh, I, I used to live in a one-bedroom flat here. So when I came back, I remember telling my wife, I said, is this where we live? <laughs> you don't realize how small, you know, <laughs> until you see. You know. So what I'm saying is that in heaven is the same. There are big mansions. You, so whatever we're doing, even what people don't see, in the middle of the night, you're praying, Lord, I pray for Pastor Sheldon. I pray for Dominion Chapel, that Dominion Chapel will grow. Oh, give him more anointing. Give, you are praying, or you heard that somebody is sick, and nobody, you, you didn't even tell, but you are praying. God is saying, wow, look at their heart. Look at their heart. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine, compare that to somebody that, you know, uh, phoning everybody around and saying things that are not right or whatever. No, 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 God doesn't. He's looking. I'm always conscious. We should always be conscious of that, that we have, uh, uh, what do you call, we have an audience. The heavenly, they're watching. So nothing is secret. You know what I'm saying? So God sees everything. He sees the whole picture, you know. So knowing your purpose, it prepares you for eternity. It's not about just these hundred years that we spend here. You know, it's not about this. Remember, there's something bigger coming. Say amen. amen. Next slide, please. Knowing your purpose helps you to know what problems you are meant to resolve, to help to solve. You're here to help solve a particular problem. Guess what? Even if somebody else is called to do the same thing, the way you would do it would be different because you have different personality, you have different disposition to those things. So knowing your purpose helps you to know what problems you are meant to solve. You are created to help solve some problem. In John 17, 4, Jesus said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work. See, the work you have given me to do. The Father gave Jesus a work to do. You have a work. Do you know the job? Do you know the work? It's not your secular job necessarily, you know, but God can use your secular job platform even for you to do part of those work. So next slide, please. Now, there are problems in our society. Let me share some of them with you. Number one, can you go to the next one, please? The, 
These days, you can if you listen to the news, one of the things you hear most is cost of living crisis. Do you agree with me? Energy bills and all these things is so high. You know, that's why even as a church, by the grace of God, every, I think we're going to start, we're, we're going to do in, in, not next week, the week after, the first Sunday of every month, we go back to our food pantry where we help one another. We can take some provision, you know, and some basic items. We're helping to, in our own little way to do what we can do to help our church, our community. The next one, please. Mental health. You know, do you know, I, growing up as a teenager, I never hear, I, you know, maybe going, growing up where I grew up from, you know, you, maybe you can see a few people here and there, you know, with mental, but now it's become such a big thing. You know, mental health issues are on the increase. And as a church, we're linking, looking up, in, I mean, looking into this right to educate our members. Last year, we had um, uh, uh, a, a, a qualified um, uh, therapy, uh, what do they call them? Sorry? Psychiatrist, yeah. We had a psychiatrist that did uh, one of our members, you know, is moved to uh, Kent now. We had a seminar about mental health. We also had um, a group that met together, and we had this lady uh, who is a trained um, psychiatrist as well. She came and helped to guide some discussion. And I remember people that, that, that I attended, they said they really felt a lot better and things like that. The next one, please. So I'm just highlighting some problems that, you know, that, 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 you know, is very common these days and that how we can, you know, help to deal with them. The rate of crime in England, in Ealing, even in the UK as a whole has gone very high. Almost every week there's a crime committed. When I was in the US last week, I mean, the US is on a different level. I couldn't believe, you know, on the news. They are even saying in a state, I'm, I'm trying to remember the state now. I was watching CNN news. Just last week in the States, they said, uh, which states, I'm trying to remember now, they, they have now decided that the, the teachers, they have agreed in that particular state that all the teachers will be bringing guns to school so that peradventure somebody comes and opens fire, they too will then be <laughs> protecting, and they have agreed. Is it Ohio, not Ohio, uh, one of the states, they have agreed. The teachers, come with your gun. Let's see somebody who's going to come and want. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what is this world turning into? When you hear the news, all you just hear is all these things. You know, crime has gone. So even here, that's why as believers, let's go on our knees, cry out to God. What is the crime going on in our community, in this nation? Go on your knees. It's not just about your need. Do you know when you are praying for things like that, God is meeting your needs with the, even without you praying about it. But a lot of times, permit me to use the word, sometimes we're very selfish. It's just about us, my need, my family, my children. We don't go outside, I mean, to think, what does God want? Do you know that all the society issues, God is counting on his children to help fix those things. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray, will seek my face, will turn from their weak, I will heal the land. So God is counting on us to help to make things better. Next one, please. Drug abuse as well is on the increase. Can you go to the next one? I don't want to talk too much you know, about this. We all know alternative sexual lifestyle is on the increase. These days, even those of us preachers, these days... <laughs> If one is not careful, you know, we have to say certain things in a certain way. But the truth is that we all know God's truth is in his word. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Now, it is otherwise. Selah. Next one, please. <laughs> population of Ealing. If, do you know the population in Ealing Borough as of 2015 is about 300 and something thousand the religious makeup of healing is only 43.7% of Christians. What are we doing as believers when all these other religions that we know, that's not the way. Christ is the only way. Praise the Lord. Next one, please. What is the solution? Can you go to the next slide, please? God wants to use you. Can you say God wants to use me to solve some of these problems? 
You know why? He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, I will hear from heaven. It could, only, it, it could even just be to pray, to go on your knees and say, God, I pray. I mean, when was the last time you pray about the issues in our community, about your church or whatever? Go on your knees, Lord, I pray. Let there be peace in our nation. Let there be peace in this country. All this knife crime, Lord, will come against it. Every spirit behind this thing. Those are kind of things. God loves that. We are the one that he wants to use. Not, can you believe, I mean, don't let me go into all that. The next one, please. So God wants to use you and I. You know why? He's giving you spiritual gift. He's giving you a passion for certain things to do with some of those areas. It's giving you abilities, personality, your experience. Your shape defines the kind of things God wants you to do for his kingdom. In Romans 12, 6, he says, Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. God has given some of us different graces. Every believer has got some kind of a gift and grace. Are you with me? Say, so let us prophesy uh, uh, in proportion to our faith. The next one, please. Okay. Now, let's look at, I, and I want to talk about, you see, there are personal vision God will give to you, and God, which is tied to your purpose. But as a church, we have a vision that God has given to us and we, we, that we run with. Can you go to the next, next slide, please? So, our vision, based on what I've said, let me first paraphrase it before we look at it. It's to awaken, to build, and to commission the sleeping leader of today's generation. So, basically, our vision is to awake the gift. Listen to this. Don't miss this. If you can't remember anything, remember this. Our, the, this church, our vision is to help you awaken the gift, the potential, the purpose, the vision God has put inside of you and to help you build it and then to commission you, to release you to fulfill what God has destined for you. Amen. Amen. To fulfill your destiny and your potential in Christ. And then you, by doing that, you are taking your rightful place in the spiritual, political, socioeconomic, and you are influencing others to do it. What that means is that, you see, some people, your, your, your real calling it's in the spiritual, it's in the body of Christ. There are some things God wants you to do. Some people, it is in the, uh, uh, in the marketplace. Maybe there's a man in the city, a believer, forgot his name, I got one of his books. He, you know what? Everywhere he's walked, he starts a fellowship, a Christian fellowship there. He gets Christians together to pray for that company, for the city, and he's doing a lot of great things. You know, some people... They may not be pastors, but they're there in the marketplace doing something great for God. Don't, get, don't, don't be at work and just forget that you're even a Christian. You know, you carry God's kingdom wherever you go. You know, in your socioeconomic career, you are influencing others. Wherever God has placed you, you're using that to influence. You see, leadership is just influencing people towards a common goal. Can you go to the next verse, please? For, I mean, next, um, um, uh, yeah, another, the next one, please. So, our mission statement, which you can easily remember, is to raising leaders, impacting communities. Praise the Lord. So, as a church, we're here to, uh, uh, for God to help us, to help you to become that leader. A leader is not necessarily somebody that's standing for. A leader is somebody that is influencing other people towards a common goal. You can be a church cleaner and you can be a leader. You can be in the music ministry. You can be in welfare, giving out something. A leader is just somebody who influences other people towards a common goal. Praise the Lord. So our mission is raising leaders, impacting communities. The next, uh, Isaiah 2, 2 to 3 is the verse God gave us when we started the church, that this church will be a church of many nations, that all nations will come into it and they will be taught the word of God. That was the scripture God gave us when we started the church. Can you go to the next um, slide, please? At DC, we develop leaders who will impact their communities and sphere of influence with Christ's character and love. We raise leaders who take their rightful place in the spiritual, political, and socioeconomic arenas. Time is fast spent. Let me go to the next one very quickly. Next. 
So what, like yesterday, I was told Elder Manuel they went for evangelism. So how do we do it? We go out to, to, to share the gospel. Straight evangelism, friendship, telling your friends about, the, about Christ, friendship evangelism, social media, digital spin, special event. We used to do what we call fun in the park. We haven't done it for since COVID now. Daniel 12, 3b, he said, those who turn men into righteousness, they are like stars forever and ever. One of the greatest blessings that God gives people, according to scripture, is somebody who witnesses for him, who turns other people to Christ. The Bible says they'll be like stars that shines forever. Evangelism is very powerful. Never shy away from me. Never say, well, I'm too shy. I don't know what to say. All of us, we don't know what to say, but we go anyway. Share your testimony. Tell them whatever. Jesus said, don't worry about what you say. I will give you what you need to say. Do you know how many times we've gone out there and we'll be talking to somebody, the person will start, cry, will start crying. They will say, oh, I, God must really love me to send it to me. Do you know how many times people have said that? So can you now imagine you stay in your house, the person you're supposed to reach, you say you're afraid, you, you are fearful. Fearful of what? You are not going alone. You are going with other people. God will give you the right word to speak. Say amen. amen. Next one, please. We're going to be rounding up very shortly. We, we do fortnightly Bible study. This is some of the things we do to equip you. That's why you need to join some of these things. We do Bible study every other week, you know, uh, uh, preaching and teaching, obviously, beginning with Christ, prayer meetings, night of divine encounter, youth Bible study. Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed to be ashamed, not needed to be ashamed, rightly dividing word of two. Word of God. It's very, very important, you know, that we, we, we teach this, we study this together, and we learn from it. Because God's voice comes through his word. If we don't study this and we put it away from us, how do you know? How can you even discern what he's saying? So let's go to the next one, please. So we grow. Yeah, I think those are the five pillars there as well. We're passionate about God, and we love one another deeply. It's our love for God that drives all that we do here. Love for God and love for one another. We're not perfect, but God is helping us to grow. Amen? And we make allowance for one another as well. Amen? Jesus said, love the Lord with all your, with your, with your, with all your heart, with all your soul, all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor, as I said. Jesus said, if you fulfill this commandment, you fulfill the uh, a royal law. Amen? Next one, please. Now, quickly, uh, I want to quickly run through this. These are some of the teams, department we have in Dominion Chapel. We have hospitality. That's Sister Buki, Elder Femi's wife. They travel. They're not here today. She's the head of hospitality department. Some of you have recently done your workers' training. I want to encourage you. Find a department, a team to join. Prayerfully consider. If you are not sure, come and talk to some of us. We can, we can give you some counsel. I must say, though, that there are some departments, um, not because what I'm saying is that we, uh, we, 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 we praise about some of these things. We don't just, you know, but, but still step forward to make your intentions known if you want to join one of some of it, you know. Uh, but some of them, because of how sensitive they are, we, we prayerfully consider certain things. Or we ask you to first do this one before you jump into this one. Are you with me? So there's hospitality. There's welfare, Sister Eleanor. Is the leader uh, is the leader there that helps us? You know, we do food pantry, we give out uh, provisions and other things. It's not just food pantry. We we'll help out with, you know, um, if people are in need and things like that within the church community. We help out as a church. Uh, we've got our admin. Um, that's Sister Jumoke. She's the one holding forth, assisted by Sister Jane. We've got the children's ministry. I think they are upstairs now. Sister Folu, Sister Jane helps there as well. The prayer one, we don't have uh, uh, myself and my wife. We kind of coordinate that. That's why I put Pastor there, you know, now, for now. The worship team, Sister Fola Shade is the, is, is the leader there, you know. Then the, you see, some of our elders, what they do is that they oversee certain departments. So, Elder Femi is the one that oversees, as uh, one of his departments is the worship. Are you with me? But Sister, Sister Fola Shade is the, is, the, is the leader, but Elder Femi oversees that. If they have anything, they go to meet Elder Femi. 
evangelism, Elder Emmanuel is, is building a team. <laughs> He's the one, uh, they went out yesterday for evangelism. Elder Emmanuel, that is his area. You know, we've got the food bank. Um, I think Toby is the one that, and working with some other people as well. We've got the media team. Tyranny has got a number of people in the media team. The brother uh, Muiwa is the one that um, is leading the ushering team as well. We've got the building maintenance, uh, the people that clean the, 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 the church on a weekly basis. Uh, uh, brother Douglas is the one that oversees that. The, we have an events team. Whenever we have an event team, they, they come together to, um, to plan it. In fact, we have an event coming up in a couple of months' time. Um, it's, uh, it's called our International Day, where we celebrate our unity in diversity. People from different cultures, they come and speak a little bit about their culture. It's usually very, very nice and interesting. That's why we've got some of these flags from these are different nations in the church. We're a church of many nations. And so in July, we're going to be having our international day. Uh, Stadiola is going to contact some of you to start planning towards that, you know, where we celebrate our unity in diversity. Please, if you have any question, you can come and speak to us. You need to join. If you're a believer and you've done your worker string, you need to join one of these departments, you know. But like I said, some of those departments we, for instance, children's department, you, we, you need to do DBS check. We need to do, a f there are a few trainings you need to do. We, we can't, you know, there's certain, some of the department, there's certain things we need to look out for before we can ask you to join. You know what I'm saying? So don't be offended if we say, please, just hold on a little bit, you know. So go to the next one, please. Time is going. I want to quickly round up. We have food bank goals. Oh, this year, this year. We want to carry on with our, we're carrying on, we, we, we run food bank from here every Saturday. We're helping and supporting the orphanage. There's an orphanage some, that we support and homeless shelter as well. Remember, we had some homeless people that came a few weeks ago. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to save at 50,000 <laughs> pounds this year towards buying our own building. This one, we're listing this building, but we want to buy our own. So that's our target. We want to raise at least two more leaders into the core leadership of this church. Then we want to win at least 100 souls. We want to hold a health seminar. There's also um, a marriage and uh, young people seminar we're going to be doing end of May. We'll send some notice about that very shortly. Can you go to the next one for me, please? I need to round up. Time is fast spent. In order to join, any, you need to be born again. You need to be committed to attend church regularly. If somebody comes once in three weeks, or they don't, they are, usually, they are really here, or they come, they, they, they are never uh, early, it will be difficult to commit to this, because as a worker, we pray before the service at 10.30, and you need to attend workers' training, sign up as a department, and get involved. Last slide, please, next slide. Dominion Chapel, I want to finish by saying, Dominion Chapel needs you. Say amen. amen. Are you available after all I've said? I'm sure you are. <laughs> Praise God. Let us rise up this afternoon. Let's give the Lord a round of applause this afternoon. I know time is fast spent. This is to remind us about who God has called you to become and for you to engage in what God is doing. I want us to just, let's just make a declaration this time. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I am available. Use me to your glory. Help me to fulfill your vision for my life. Help me to fulfill your purpose for my life. I make myself available in the name of Jesus. Help me to become who you have created me to be in the name of Jesus. Help me, oh God, to, to walk in the giftings, the abilities that you have called, you have put in me, in the name of Jesus. Say, I come against every spirit of fear. You have not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take your seat for a moment. I just want to pray. If somebody is watching here or you are here, you've never committed your heart to Jesus and you would like to surrender your heart to Jesus, I want to give you this opportunity 
to do that today. So if you're here or you are watching on, online, I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my heart to you. I repent of all my sins. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me with your blood. I ask, O oh God, that you will make me your child today and teach me the way of righteousness in Jesus name amen amen if you're watching on our live stream and you are this is the first time you're doing this please contact us and we're going to help you to 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 to, to, to grow in your work with God and you will fulfill purpose and destiny in Jesus mighty name amen amen praise the lord